One of the really disturbing findings in the National School Climate Survey is that more than 80% of the time when teachers are present, when such remarks are made, they do little or nothing to stop it. If a slur is used against him based on his race, the bully will get in trouble. But if it's based on perception of sexual orientation or something else, people look the other way. It's also discouraging that students are reluctant to report their experiences because they don't think that anything will be done. Every child needs to be able to walk into a classroom and know they're safe. In our training programs and in all our interventions, we're trying to engage all concerned adults to take action. First of all, you have a chancellor's regulation that prohibits explicitly bullying, harassment based on sexual orientation or gender identity or expression. Every student receives at the beginning of the school year with a discipline code, a respect for all brochure that makes clear what is and is not acceptable behavior. In addition, we also have teacher trainings that we've developed with GLSEN, where we've trained already thousands of teachers in the system on how to recognize, combat, and stop anti-gay harassment and bullying. I realized that I had a lot of misconceptions too. There were things that I just did not know. Going to that training gave me a forum to ask those questions. And then I was able to take that information back to the people that I was working with. I've never been on a project that's been so successful. Many teachers in the system didn't feel that it was their duty or obligation to intervene. And now they understand how important a safe and supportive school climate is to all kids. It really is a wake-up call to everyone, to all concerned adults, to really treat bullying as a serious public health issue that it is.